Friends, it's time to go shopping in nature's wild produce aisle. Let me introduce you to a plant in the Rumex genus called patient stock, or sometimes just referred to as patience. Now this particular dock is a native to Europe and was actually cultivated there as a garden plant and used in Eurasian cuisine. Patience is the most flavorful, tender dock we can find. And that's when the magic happens. Just within a few seconds, you're gonna see the color of the greens change to eventually a drab army green color. Finally, I'm gonna add in the greens to the, with the wild leek saute, get them on a plate. Hey everybody, I'm Sean Rao, host of the Wild Food Series, Can I Eat This? Just about every day I eat something wild that I harvested with my own hands from my own landscape. This channel is about giving you some tips so you can go out into the wild, into the woods, or even in and around cities and find the best food right under your nose. Food that's wild, that's naturally organic, local, teeming with nutrients, and also foods that have these unique flavors that you're just not gonna find anywhere else. Rumex patientia is quite similar to Rumex crispus, also known as curly dock. In fact, the two may hybridize with each other. By the way, don't get confused with burdock. That is not a true dock. That's just called burdock. That's actually an aster. It's in the aster family, whereas this is in the Polygonaceae family or the rhubarb family. Same family that we find Japanese knotweed in, that we find sorrel in. Patient stock and other docks, they grow in areas that are known to be anthropogenic. In other words, they are man-made disturbance habitats. In other words, yeah, pretty much everywhere. You can find them in meadows, in fields, in lots, abandoned lots, things like that. All the plants in this family have a distinctive papery sheath on the stalk called an acria. You really want to locate the acria. That's a really distinctive, distinguishing feature of the entire family. Now, when you're pulling out one of these stalks, you might notice there's a bit of slime at the base of it. That's totally normal and natural. In fact, it's a pretty good sign that you found the plant at the right stage for gathering. Many of the plants in the Polygonaceae family have this characteristic lemony kick to them due to the presence of oxalic acid. Speaking of oxalic acid, it is a common anti-nutrient found in many wild greens. In cultivated greens like spinach, it's also found in nuts like almonds and in fruits like raspberries. And sadly, there's a lot of it in dark chocolate. Now, with oxalic acid in substantial quantities, it can bind to calcium in the body and also make other nutrients unavailable. I'm sure a lot of you agree, one thing we don't need is more food police to tell us what we can and cannot eat. But I just wanted to give you an example of what I do for my own practice when it comes to mitigating the effects of oxalic acid. Number one is to get to know what the high oxalic foods are so you don't consume a crap ton all at once. In other words, I don't put spinach in my almond milk smoothie and then add cacao powder and then go and have a heaping pile of wild dock greens. I don't do that. Number two is eat like we did for thousands of years. So that means seasonally. When your oxalic rich foods are not growing anymore, just stop eating them. And also eat a wide variety, not just plants from one or two families. You know, being a forager, you're, you get exposed to all these different plant families and it's definitely good for the diet, I believe, to vary, just like we did for thousands of years. Now, the time to harvest patient stock and really other docks as well is in the spring before the flower comes out. You want to find this plant when it's in the rosette stage, when it's gathering energy in the leaves. And for me, that's very early spring. If you wait too long, those energies will eventually be put into the flower stalk, which is technically edible and good too. Um, if you get that young enough, but generally the leaves at that stage are going to be too tough to eat. So there's a relatively short window for this. Now we really want to ID this accurately. And when the plant is in the rosette stage on patient stock, you can find the acria at the base of the stalk. Now the leaves of patient stock are alternate on the stalk and individually they are long and broad with smooth margins along the edge, although sometimes they can be a little wavy. If you compare it to curly dock, the leaves are more linear, they're thinner, 
and Curly Dock has more of a wavy margin thing happening, and that's called crisp. It has crisp leaves, okay? So with patient stock, it's just a little less crisp. You are also going to want to avoid plants with a reddish midvein. Now, that could mean that you're dealing with a plant called bitter dock or also called broadleaf dock. It's not like you will be poisoned by eating it. It's just like it's probably not going to taste very good. It's probably going to be bitter. Yes, you can find some of them that will be not so bitter, but they are, not, they are certainly not going to compare to the food value of patient stock. So if you see those red mid veins, then just move on. Patient stock and curly dock, they're perennial, okay? So that means that they're gonna grow for more than two years. They have more than a two year life cycle. What that means for you as a forager means that you can keep coming back to the same plant every year. It'll keep coming up for as long as it has the energy to. But with that said, within each rosette, you don't want to over harvest and the same plant over and over again because eventually you will deplete the energy of that plant. So in my practice, I will take a few leaves from each rosette and maybe a, a few shoots when they come up and that's about it. I won't come back to that plant again. So make sure you have enough in the area that you can have a sustainable harvest. You can do the area that you're harvesting in a great service as well as tend to your wild garden by pulling out the aggressive non-native plants by the roots, such as this garlic mustard. As you see me kind of weeding out this patch here, there's also this other invasive here, which is somewhat toxic called celandine. You can pull this up. I usually bring a garbage bag with me, set these aside, and then put them roots and all into a trash bag. Depending on what you're going to be doing with this plant for food, that will dictate the kinds of leaves you'll be harvesting. Now, when you're harvesting the youngest leaves, we're talking about the meristematic leaves, you want to look for the, um, the plants that are either the leaves are curled up or they have these fold lines on them. So they're, they'll be a slightly different color too, maybe lighter in color, but they will be the most tender. So if you're going to eat them raw, and I would suggest, you know, moderation is the key there because of the um, oxalic acid being the highest concentration when they're raw, then go for those meristematic leaves that have those lines on them that are rolled up. Those are going to be the most tender. If you're gathering plants to cook up, then you could be a little bit more liberal with patient stock because even when these leaves get large, as long as they're somewhat young, young they're still going to be pretty tender when you cook them. So I wouldn't say that is the case for Rumex Crispus. I'd say that you want to be more discerning with that one. But for patient stock, you can definitely gather them when they are large and have unfolded for a bit. And of course, we have to talk about the stalks. Now, my son calls these lemon sticks and these can be eaten raw. All you need to do really is just to peel them. You can just take your thumbnail and sort of peel off some of that fiber that's on the outer edge. It's really a very quick thing to do and it just makes for a more pleasant kind of chomp on these. They taste a little bit like green apple. That's what they remind me of. They're super crispy and juicy and really, really pleasant eaten raw. Now, I recommend that the first thing you do with these greens is to just simply blanch them quickly and make a simple saute. I prepare them first by removing the stems from the leaves, but don't discard the stems because you're still gonna use them. You can actually juice the stems like I'm doing here, and um, you could use them in place of lemon juice. They're not exactly like lemon juice, of course, they're not as strong, but they're definitely in the ballpark and have that sort of lemony kick. Just a quick pause here to say that if you are liking this video, if it is useful and helpful to you, please consider liking the video, subscribing to the channel. It definitely helps getting this video seen by other people who this might benefit as well. So thank you so much. Now, in a pan with some hot oil, I'll add some halved wild leek bulbs. Uh, wild leeks come out around the same time as the patient stock greens come out, so super convenient if you can find wild leeks. Otherwise, you can use onions. I'll add in some hot peppers here, some salt, pepper, some cumin. And after the bulbs start getting a touch of color, I'll add in a few slices of fresh garlic. I might add some butter in too, but shh, don't tell anybody that part. I'll keep cooking this until I get some nice caramelization action happening, and then I'll set the whole thing aside. Next, I'll chop up the leaves into more manageable sizes, and then I will place them into a pan of boiling water. 
and that's when the magic happens. Just within a few seconds, you're gonna see the color of the greens change to eventually a drab army green color. That's when I know they're done. Don't cook them for longer than that. This process should take as little as 30 seconds. I'm not kidding. They cook up that quick. When they're done, strain them quickly and either shock them in cold water unless you're going to be using them right away. Now, to put this all together, I'm actually going to cook up those stems as well. So for these, I'm going to cut them into smaller segments and cook them in hot oil for a minute or two. Again, they get soft really quickly, so not much time is needed at all with these. Finally, I'm going to add in the greens to the, with the wild leek saute, get them on a plate, and then I'm going to be adding some finely chopped leek stems just to give the whole thing a bit of an extra crunch to it. Folks, I'm telling you, these greens belong in two places, and one of them is in a restaurant near you. The other one is in my belly. Mm -hmm. 